Welcome back for another Onshape tutorial. Today we're working on activity 1.4, the suite improvements or your do nothing machine and the documentation that is associated with that. At this point, you should have your do nothing machine that actually functions. When you grab the handle, the toy should rotate with it. Now we're going to add the documentation. First, you'll come over here to the bottom left and click the plus sign to create a new drawing. You want to make sure that you're choosing the Proto A option. If you don't have this option here, you can go back and look at the agenda where it's linked here. Click on that Proto A, Proto -A template. It will open up an on shape and then you're going to want to make your own copy. So click the menu button and copy the workspace so that that will now be a part of your on shape. But again, at this point, that should already be inside of your on shape because you've done multi views before and this is the template that you should have been using. Once you have that copied over, you'll choose that Proto A template. And we'll start by creating technical working drawings for each of the parts involved in the do nothing machine. We'll choose our base first or whichever one of your part files pops up. You'll need your front view and your top view and then also your isometric and I will let you do the rest of this on your own. Again at this point you should know how to do the multi views. You should know how to dimension them. Just make sure that you display the hidden lines by right clicking and choose choosing show hidden lines. Make sure that you do that. And then if you need a resource to help you in putting all of the correct informations, information on there, remember that with within 1.4, there is a Google slide presentation with a technical drawing for each one of the part files. So all you have to do is follow what is listed here already. So you have a template there, you have instructions, just make sure that you have this information inside of your technical working drawings. To add an additional sheet, we're going to want to make sure we're putting everything inside of this one document. So you should have a document labeled 1.4 Suite Improvements. Inside of that document, there should be five part files along the bottom and an assembly all within the same document. And then we just added a drawing. Inside of this drawing tab is where we'll keep all of our sheets. We don't want to come over here and create a new drawing for each one of the sheets. You'll press this button here to display your sheets and then just press the plus sign to get an additional sheet. You'll need five sheets one for each of the part files involved in the machine. You'll need an additional sheet for the assembly. So on page six, we'll do this one together. We're going to insert the assembly. So when you drop this menu down, your assembly file is probably not there. So you'll choose insert. And then along here, you have your part studio where all of your part files are, and then you have your assemblies. So we'll go to assemblies and then we'll choose our assembly. And instead of our front view being our orientation like normal, you want to change it to isometric. Should look like this and I'll place that in there. If for, if for some reason you can't see all of the components of your 1.4, you can come back to your assembly and manipulate that assembly so that you can see all of the parts better. So say something like that, and then go back to your drawing. And since this is an adaptive modeling program, you'll see this button here is now highlighted yellow. Click that and it will update the assembly on the drawing to match whatever changes that you made in the assembly. The same thing applies if you change any dimensions on a part or anything like that. Everything will update throughout your entire document. I'm also going to right click and choose the shaded view so that I can see the different colors. Your assembly should be in different colors. I know mine is blue, but yours as in the directions should be different colors. You don't have to match it exactly as 
um, the colors of the instructions and examples you were given. You can customize yours to your liking. However, you do need to change the colors for each one of them. Your entire assembly should not be blue like mine. We're now going to come over here and add our bill of materials. We discussed the bill of materials and how it is just like a parts list. It has everything listed that is inside of this assembly. Um, it has part numbers, it has descriptions, it has item numbers, and it has the quantity of each of those items. We'll add our parts list and you want to make sure it says assembly one. If it doesn't have your, your assembly selected here, it won't be able to link the information and it won't be able to add any information related to your assembly. So make sure it says assembly one. If it doesn't, you can click insert and choose your assembly from there. We then want to choose this bottom right option here. So we want to fix it to the bottom right hand corner. That will allow us to snap it in place here. Now looking at my parts list, yours may be a little more empty than mine, but your first column is your item number. The item number is directly related to the items that the order of which you put the items into the assembly. So the order that you placed each part into the assembly. If you placed your base first, that will be item number one. If you placed your handle first, that would be your item number one. So ours may vary here, but it's directly related to the order that you put them into the assembly. The second column is your quantity. So if you have two sliders, you will see that there are two beside the slider. We don't put slider and then slider under item and have just one of them. We just have one slider and there are two of them inside of the assembly. So you place that same slider into your assembly twice. Then you have a part number. A part number is typically like an IUI number or SKU number or a VIN number, serial number, something like that. It can be connected to a company's inventory um, or something of the sort where kind of like you as an individual have a social security number that's kind of like your serial number that is a personal identification number. Each of the parts would have something like that in real life as well. So if you were looking through inventory, you can find that and then you can find all of the information related to that part. Just like I could look up if I had access to that type of information, I could look up your social security number and find all of your information about you as a person as well. And then we have a description. So this part number doesn't mean anything to you. If I just spit out a social security number, you would know who that person is just by their social, social security number. A part, a description of that part would be better suited for someone that doesn't have the computer that can type that information in. Yours is probably blank. To add that information in, you have to edit the actual part. You can't just edit the chart. The chart is linked to the parts. And then the part is where you have to add that information. So if you try to edit this chart, you'll only be changing the aesthetics of it. So what it looks like, the font size, the things that it has listed, things like that. So in order to change any of this information, we'll go to the handle, perhaps. And under part, so not under here where you created the item, but down here under the actual part, you'll right click and choose properties. And this is where you'll get a dialog box where you can put very important information that is specific to each one of the parts. We've got the part number, which is right here. You can put whatever part number you want. The description, which would be the handle in this case. Um, you can name it, so give it an actual name instead of part one if you want. You can put the vendors and other things of specific product line if you wanted to or something of the sort. Um, so you can add that information if you want, but you are going to want to just make up something for your part number and your description so that your columns aren't blank on your parts list. And we'll apply that. And then just like before, whenever I made modifications to my assembly, I've now made modifications to a part. So when I go back to drawing one, that arrow should be lit up yellow again, and I will click that button to refresh it and update that information. And you will see that now I have information populated for the handle, which is item number three. And then the last thing we're going to do is add balloons. You use that, you do that by creating call out. So we'll choose call out and you want to make sure it says item number. We want to attach an item number, kind of like if you were to 
buy something from Target that needed to be assembled and you have instructions with little arrows that point to what each item is, this is kind of the same thing. So you want this option here to say table item number. If it doesn't say item number, you can add it by clicking here and choosing item number. If it says anything other than item number, select that option and delete it off because we only want to label the item numbers. And then you'll go through and just click on each of the items and you'll see that it'll populate with a number that is directly related to the, the chart and the item number column. And you want to go through and label each of the components. You'll see I've got number one. Number one is my base. Number two, number two is my slider. Number three is my handle. Number four is my handle pin. And number five is my slider pin. And once you get those balloons on there, you have completed it. You want to go back and make sure that you edit the designer, the drawing, the scale, the date, and the class period. Make sure all of that information is correct throughout all of your sheets. And then make sure that sheets one through five have each of the parts on it. So page one should have the base, page two should have the slider, three the handle, four the handle pin, and five the slider pin. And it is fully dimensioned. If you need a resource of where to put the dimensions and what information you need, you can always go back to the instructions of 1.4.1 and look at the Google slide presentation where those dimensions have already been labeled for you. And then I think that's it. So once you've done this part, you should have already shared your link with me by doing link sharing and inserting this into the assignment for 1.4. If you've already done that, any changes that you've made to this document, and by changes, I mean you added a drawing to it, this information will update automatically and you do not need to resubmit. The only people that should be submitting anything at this point is anyone that hasn't already submitted the activity last week.